Good morning, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well. While people are hopping on, um, let me talk about grades really quickly. Your grades on your essay from UT have been released. So if you go to your college course and click on grades, you will see um, what you scored on the most recent essay. And you should get some feedback from the graders. Um, I think the scores were pretty low this time. And it was that way with the other on-ramps teachers that I spoke with. So if you scored low, please do not feel defeated. Um, I think they were just really hard on this essay. Um, we still have 50% of the points left to earn in this class um, from UT. And they will both be about the persuasive essay, which we're working on right now. Okay? So um, I just wanted to make everybody aware of that. As far as your high school class grades go, all of the assignments that are listed in focus for the second six weeks, those are the only assignments that are going to be in the second six weeks. Everything else will be in the third six weeks. So if it says missing, if you're missing some work or some assignments for the second six weeks, you really are missing those. Um, and you can still turn them in. I have to submit my grades in the morning, so I will be doing that. If you have late work to get to me, please do it um, today so I can get that graded and into the gradebook. If you've got questions on that, you guys might want to hang out after class and ask me or shoot me a remind message. Okay, so there are, looks like about 12 of us here. I'm going to go ahead and get started and I'll post this video for everybody who is running late this morning. But we do have um, some stuff to get to. Uh, let me start by asking, does anybody have any questions for me? Okay, so then, okay, Lynn Hayes must have a question, hang on. You don't see your grade in the UT Canvas course, is that correct? Okay, um, those were supposed to be released to you guys. I've got them. So if you don't see um, your grade on that, um, I'll, you and I will meet after class tonight and you can show me your screen and we'll try and figure out what's going on with that. Okay. All right, so arrangement. Here we go. Okay, so here's what we're going to do today. Here's how we're going to talk about class. We are going to review the expectations for the persuasive essay. We're going to go back over that. We're going to talk about where I think you should be right now. We're going to talk about the classical argument structure, which is how you will build this essay. And then you're going to do a group assignment looking at the persuasive essay. And then I think it's really time that you guys get started writing if you haven't already. Okay. So the persuasive essay, and I'm pulling all of this information from module 6.5.2. And um, actually, you know what, let me hang, let me stop for one second and share this slide presentation with you guys. That way you guys can follow along just as I am. Okay, there's the copy of the slide presentation that I am sharing. So you guys should be able to go here and I'll post it in the classroom that way you guys can see it as well. Okay, so back to this. Okay, so um, all of this is coming from module 6.5.2. That's where you'll turn in the persuasive essay, your first copy. This paper has to be four to six pages. It has to be MLA formatted. It has to have a work cited. You will present reasons and evidence to a specific audience. That's the skill that they are assessing. You're gonna use at least two credible sources in your paper. You need a concession, refutation, and rebuttal. 
that is what we're going to work on next class period, the concession, refutation, and rebuttal. Your essay needs to be peer-reviewed. That is what we will work on in the class after that. And you need to have a specific arrangement tailored to your audience. That's what we're going to work on today. We're going to talk about the arrangement, how to organize your essay. So by now, you should have completed the pacing guide. You should have selected where you're going to publish and filled out the audience worksheet. You should have planned your argument. You should have thought about what claims and reasons you're going to use. And you should have taken notes on the different types of arguments, induction, analogy, difference, definition, causation. There was a um, chart for you to fill out. You need to use at least two different types of arguments within your essay. Okay, so you'll use definition and induction, or you might use analogy and causation. Um, but you need to use at least two of these different types in your writing. That is something that they are looking for. Okay, how are we doing? So far, so good? Quinty, how are you doing? Good? Okay. All right, if you don't know what I'm talking about, about these types of arguments and the worksheet that we did, that is in our Google Classroom. So if you go to Classwork and you look at Arrangement, you see an assignment, I'm sorry, Argumentation, and you see an assignment that's called Types of Arguments. That was what you guys were to have filled out, okay? Um, so if you have not done that yet, you need to do that. You need to be familiar with those types of arguments so that you can use them in your essay. Okay. All right, so let's talk about arrangement. That's kind of the big thing we're looking at today. And arrangement is how the argument is laid out, how it's presented to the reader. There are many, many different types of arrangement. And when you're picking how to arrange your essay, you really need to think about your audience. The arrangement must match your audience, okay? Different audiences respond better to different forms of arrangement. So let's talk about some arrangements you're probably familiar with, okay? Um, there's an arrangement for scientific writing. I'm certain you guys do this in your, your science classes, your lab classes. You give an explanation of the question or the hypothesis that the researcher wants to answer. And then you give a description of the methods that the researcher uses to answer the question. And then you give a description of the data collected while applying this method. And then you give an analysis of the data featuring your correlations. Okay, so you probably do this. Here's the experiment. Here is the method I'm going to use. Here is what I found. And here's my analysis of the data of the experiment. That's one type of arrangement. Another type of arrangement is called the specific to general period. And this is what news stories do. Um, academic writing goes broad and brings it in specifically. So it'll talk about a genre and then bring it in specifically to a type of work. Journalism does the opposite. They go specific to broad. Many, many news stories will start with an example or an analogy, a reason why you should care about the thing. And then they go into what the thing actually is, a moment into something broader, a broader story. This is really good when you are trying to draw in an audience and help them see why they should care. So if you have an uninformed, an uninterested, even a hostile audience, this giving them a specific and then drawing it out to the broader argument that can be really useful to you, right? Let me tell you about the woman who lost her job and weave that into a larger focus. Let me tell you why it's important that we give relief during this time, okay? Make me care about something small and then draw it out to something big. Okay. So the classical method is the type of method that you'll need to use. You can use some of these other techniques we've already talked about, but here's the way your paper needs to be arranged. It was developed in ancient Greece and ancient Rome, and it has six parts. They're called the exordium, the narration, the partition, the argument, the refutation, and the peroration. So we're going to go over all of them. I'm going to tell you what they are. And then at the very top, you guys will see um, right here, I've got the module numbers, okay, so you can go and read more about them in Canvas. 
So the exordium is the first thing. This is your introduction. It's where you introduce the audience to the subject and the speaker. It's where you give the exigency, the background information, okay? You've done this before, especially in the mapping the controversy essay. You just didn't know it was called the exordium. So let's talk about the exordium in terms of audience. If you are writing to an uninterested or uninformed audience, you have to get them interested in what you're writing about or they're not going to continue reading. So you would use the exordium to grab their attention. You might give them the story of somebody, compelling story that they would care about, right? You might use a lot of description, describe how something looks, describe the state of affairs, something that's going to really want them to keep reading. If you're writing to a hostile audience, that's an audience that does not agree with you from the get-go, this is where you're gonna start earning their trust. You're going to hear the very first thing in the paper, you're gonna tell them where you agree on some things. You might give your credentials. Why are you qualified to talk about this? Why should they listen to you? You should explain how you're like, look, I know you don't agree with me, but we are all Americans, right? I, I know that you don't agree with this one thing, but here's where we do agree. Let's, let's start by focusing on that, okay? This is going to happen in your very first paragraph. If you're writing to a confused audience, an audience that doesn't get your topic or they don't understand it, lay out the point of confusion. Look, I want to start by just acknowledging that, that, we, that, that a lot of people don't understand what it means um, to have universal health care, okay? Um, so let me just explain what universal health care is real quick. Um, let's just acknowledge that this is probably where you're confused, and then we're going to talk about that throughout my paper, okay? If you're writing to a sympathetic audience, you don't need a whole lot here. I mean, sorry, your audience already agrees with you. They're knowledgeable about the subject, okay? But you should already be able to see that who your audience is is going to dictate how you write this paper. Yeah? Okay, do I have any questions so far? How are we doing out there? Quinty seems to be getting it in, in person. How about the rest of you guys? Are you okay? I got it. Okay, great, Eldon. Okay, let's, all right, let's see. Quick comment. Okay, left and right, okay, so now I lot of stuff here. The essay is due on the 18th, I believe, which is a week from Friday, I think. It's the day, right, it's the day we get out for, for break. It's our last day of class. Left and right bias are, um, that's where you are talking about the media. And if you are left-leaning, you're probably more democratic, um, probably more open to the government intervening in problems and helping to solve them. If you are right-biased, that's more Republican, that's more conservative, you are probably less likely to want the government involved. Okay. Um, that's in a nutshell. Okay, so the, all of that is the introduction, the exordium. Okay. And, and UT is looking for a specific exordium paragraph in your essay. This is part of what they're judging you on. This is in the rubric. It specifically says you must use this arrangement, okay? So please pay attention to this part. This is important. The next part of the paper is called the narration. This is where you give background information. So you've introduced yourself. You've introduced the topic. Now you need to give background information. And you're giving the information the audience needs to understand your argument. Now, again, the audience is going to dictate how big this section is. For an uninterested audience, the background you give needs to convince them that this controversy is important, right? I know that I have a student writing about school and schooling and discipline in school. So if you are an adult who does not have children, you might be uninterested in discipline in schools. Why do you care? It's not affecting you or your life, right? So how are you going to get them interested? What background information do they need to know to become interested in this topic? 
you might look at um, what happens to students who are over-disciplined in school, what kind of citizens they become, because these people will be living in your community. You should care what happens to them in school. Your tax dollars are going to pay for this. So you'll need to explain that in the narration. If you are writing to a hostile audience, you're probably going to spend a, quite a bit of time here in narration, giving the background information. You do not want to tell them right away what your viewpoint is on the subject, because if you do that, they're probably going to stop reading and think of all the reasons why they disagree with you. You want to ease them into this. You want to really have a discussion before you start having an argument. Okay? If you're writing to an uninformed or confused audience, you need to bring them up to speed. What are the important events they need to know? Who are the major players they need to know? But you also need to be careful not to overwhelm them with information. You overwhelm an uninterested and uninformed or a confused audience with information, they will stop reading. You need to find that balance between the information they need to know to understand your argument and what is too much, okay? A sympathetic audience isn't going to need a lot here. They already agree with you. They already understand what you're saying. Okay, how are we doing now? Um, okay, Megan, you don't need to be wing-based at all. You don't need to be right-based or left-based at all, okay, in, in your audience. When you're looking at your audience, you need to think about who is going to be sympathetic to you or hostile to you. It could be a conservative newspaper. It could also be somebody local. So for people who are writing about the transgender bathroom issue, you, you need to publish it in a, it asks you to publish it in a periodical magazine or a newspaper or a website, okay? Um, but Fort Worth ISD had this exact issue come up. Uh, Scribner and the school board took a stand against the Lieutenant Governor, Dan Patrick, on this issue a couple years ago, right? You could write to a local magazine about this. You could write to the Fort Worth ISD website. You could write to a student newspaper, all right? Um, a student newspaper like the Southwest newspaper, that is not going to be left or right leaning at all. So it's not so much what political party or conservative or liberal does your audience have, it's who is going to listen to your argument or who is going to be hostile to your argument. If they're going to be hostile to your argument, what do they look like? What do they read? And that's where you want to publish, okay? That's why we did all that prep work on the audience and who they are. Okay, any more questions? All right, sounds like some of you guys need to go back over the audience stuff and you might want to um, stay on the call so we can talk about it and try and find a good place for you to publish, okay? All right, so we have exordium and we have narration. Let's talk about the next thing, that's the partition. The partition you probably are familiar with as a thesis statement, okay? That's the principal claim and the manner of argument. This is where you say, this is what I'm going to say, and this is how I'm going to say it, all right? Kind of hard to jazz this one up. It's, it's a pretty straightforward statement. It is really important for your confused audience. They need to understand what's coming, okay? If you lay this out really rigidly for a hostile audience, it's going to kind of make the hair on the back of their neck stand up. They're going to get really angry because they already know they disagree with that point. So you need to ease into this for a hostile audience. And that's why you'll have that big, long narration first to get them thinking about how you're like and why they should be open to this idea. The confused audience needs to see this pretty quickly. This is what we're talking about. This is why we're talking about it. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. So depending on the type of audience you have will also dictate what this looks like and where in the paper this occurs. You guys with me? Okay. 
Okay, the argument is the most important part of the paper, but it's not necessarily the longest part of the paper. This is where you give your reasons, okay, why you believe your audience should agree with you. And you also have to give evidence that supports your reasons. This is where your sources are going to come in and the research you've done is going to come in, okay? You're writing to a hostile audience. Your argument probably isn't going to be very long. Your narration is going to be long, where you can get them to listen to you. Okay, UT is going to specifically look at how this part of your paper is arranged. In addition to how the whole paper is arranged, they're going to look at this part and how this part is arranged. I want you to present reasons and evidence so that they reinforce one another. Okay, like I mentioned earlier in my paper, this is also happening. Okay, here's another reason why you should believe, and it actually ties into the first reason in this way, very much like the synthesis we did before. You might want to arrange your reasons from the least persuasive to the most persuasive. That way it's building up to your most important reason. You might want to give your most important reason first and give your weaker argument second and then give your next most important reason last. People tend to remember the first and last thing they hear and forget the stuff in the middle. Okay. So those are all arrangement choices and you two will be looking to see how you present your argument. Okay, how are we doing so far? We good? Have I lost you? Quincy, have I lost you? Are you no, good? good? Okay. All right, then we come to the refutation. This is where you show why the, I'm sorry, not audience, it should be opposition's viewpoint is flawed. Let me fix that really quick because otherwise this isn't going to make any sense. Okay, why the opposition? Okay, and you guys are probably familiar with this. You've probably done refutations before. We are going to work on this next class period, okay? For most audience, most audiences, the refutation comes right after the argument. Here's my argument, here's what I think, here's what the opposition thinks, and here's why that's flawed. If you're writing to a hostile audience, you're going to flip that. You're going to put the refutation first. You're going to say, look, I know what you're thinking. You think this. Here's why that's wrong. Now let me show you why I'm correct. Does that make sense? Okay. So for most, reputation comes after argument. For hostile audiences, it's flipped. Okay, the peroration, that's the conclusion. This is where you spin stuff forward. For a sympathetic audience, you're going to want to give them reasons to feel, reasons to believe. Let me remind you about that woman who lost her job, why you're doing this. You're doing it for her. Okay? Or, I believe we really all can be better if we work together. Here's why. Okay? If you're writing to a hostile audience, that's different. You're going to want to, because you want them to agree with you. You want them ultimately to think about what you've said and come to a new conclusion. So build some more trust. Let me just remind you that I am your neighbor. I live in your community, right? It's not somebody you don't know. This is me, and I'm talking to you. Here's where we're alike. This is, and I want to acknowledge, hostile audience, that what you believe is true, and many of your values are just. You are a good person. In this one area, I need you to adjust your thinking. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, so that's the basic outline of the essay. It's got all those parts in it. And, and how long each part is, and what you do in each part is gonna depend entirely upon who your audience is, who you are writing to. Okay, you need help, it is out there. Here's the Writing Center hours for this week. It is Monday, they are open from 1.30 to 6. Tuesday from 9.30 to 1, and Wednesday from 1.30 to 5. They'll post new hours for Thursday and Friday of this week, okay? To go to the Writing Center, I have made a video. It is on our Google Classroom. Let me show you. If you go to our classroom, to our first page, and go to the chat, it says, um, 
how to submit, and also accessing the writing consultation. So if you pull up the accessing writing consultations video, all right, it'll show you how to log on. There's an extra step that you have to do. When you log on, it's going to ask you to log into your Zoom account, and you'll have to log on with the SSO single sign-on U Texas. All right. The video shows you exactly how to do that, and that's how you can get into the Zoom to go to the Writing Center. All right. So if you want to go to the Writing Center, <coughs> I've had a couple students go. They said it's very helpful. Um, they're very nice. They ask you a bunch of questions, and then they get right to what you need to do in your paper. So they are there to help you um, through the writing process. Please use them. That's what they're there for. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm going to post this video. Remember the modules are at the very top so that you can read in Canvas more about each of these things if you need more information. <clears throat> Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a group assignment, okay? You guys are going to look at a student example in groups. <coughs> this is an essay that was turned in for this very same prompt a couple of years ago. As you read, you are going to highlight the following parts. You're going to talk with each other and figure out what the exordium is. That's the introduction. You're going to highlight it in yellow. You're going to look at for the narration. That's where you give the background information. You're going to highlight that in green. You're going to look for the partition. Um, that is the thesis statement, what you're arguing. And you're going to do that in that turquoise blue. It's actually called cyan. Then you're going to do the argument. All right, that's the reasons and the evidence. You're going to highlight that in magenta or the pink color. Then you're going to look for the refutation. Here is why my opposition thinking is flawed. And you're going to do that in the light blue color. It's called cornflower. And then you're going to do the peroration. That's the conclusion where I tell you, you know, reasons, I give you reasons to think or believe, or I remind you of what we have in common if it's a hostile audience. You're going to do that in orange. Then there are four questions at the very end of this assignment. You're going to answer those and you're going to turn it in individually. You'll have worked together in a group, but you're going to turn in your own copy of it. Okay, so a couple of things. First, in the chat, I am going to put the link to the slides again. So if you guys need to go back to the slides and say, okay, what's the peroration again? I don't remember. What's the exordium again? There are the slides. So you can pull them up. You can also go to Canvas. Okay, here is Canvas. Gonna come here. I'll drop the Canvas link in the chat. Okay, so you can find out more about it. And then the actual assignment itself. If you go into classwork, you'll see it's called arrangement assignment. Okay. So when you click that, you'll see the same instructions and you'll see the persuasive essay example. And at the very end of the persuasive essay example, you will see the questions. All right. So to highlight this, all right, you just pick this highlighting tool, and then here are all the colors, right? You've got orange, yellow, green, there's that turquoisey color, the light blue, um, a purple, uh, a magenta, okay? All right, and you'll just highlight whatever you want and make sure it's in that color. Okay. okay. And then at the very bottom, you have your questions. So um, this gives you an example of the essay to look at with each other. It gives you a chance to work through and look at the different parts of this. Okay. So we have about 24 minutes in class left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys into groups where you guys get to work together. One of you might want to share your screen so that everybody can see what you're doing and you guys can all do it together. And then, um, then at the very end of class, um, I'll bring you guys back. We'll go over what you saw and um, I'll send you guys on your way. Sound good? 
actually we have an hour we don't have 24 minutes we get out of here at 11 30. so i'll let you guys work for about 30 minutes which means at 11 05 i'm going to bring you back to class okay does anybody have any questions for me I'm going to give you guys 30 minutes in your breakout rooms to work on this. And then, okay. All right, I'm putting you guys into three rather large breakout rooms. There we go. Okay, Ariana, Alec, Emily, Quinty, are you going to your room? Yes. Okay, Rodrigo, David, Jonna, you guys should be headed to your breakout room. Just waiting on Alec, Emily, Kajana. Hi, hey Jason, you're just getting here. I need to put you in a breakout room. But first, I need to make sure you've got some stuff in the chat. So I'm going to put two things in the chat and I need you to get them. One is the Google Slides we just went over. The other is the link to OnRamps. Our Canvas course. We are looking at arrangement. So Jason, the assignment that you are doing is in classwork and it's called the arrangement assignment. You're doing this in a group right now. So I'm gonna put you over into the group unless you have any more questions. You good? All right, Jason, I hope you're good because I'm about to send you to the group.
So hi everybody. Just waiting for everybody to come back. Okay. Okay. Happy to see you guys back. So, how did that go? David says you guys made some good progress. Do you guys feel like you understand a little bit better the organization and how that'll look? Does anybody have any questions or notice anything about the structure? Okay, well, let me walk you guys through what I saw. Um, I will, it was, it was largely in the order I gave you, although some stuff was a little different. So let's talk about that, okay? Okay, so in looking at the essay, the very first thing I saw them do was I saw them give the exordium or the introduction, right? which introduces the audience to that subject of police shootings, the idea of criticizing the police. It's targeted right toward Ferguson, Missouri, if we look up at the top where the shooting happened. And then in that same paragraph, we have the partition, that thesis. I believe in order to help our police force, constructive criticism is necessary. And then they go right into the example, okay? And, and if you didn't get this exactly, that is fine. I'm just grading you on having it completed, okay? So just, just so you know that, okay. Then in the third paragraph, we go into the narration. So this was a little different than the format I gave you, right? We go into the background, the facts. Here's what happened. This boy was shot by Darren Wilson. His death happened, and it's a pretty short paragraph. Why? because this happened in Ferguson, Missouri. The people who live where this is gonna be published already know about this, they lived it. If you look at the very top, you see this is an opinion article addressing the people of Ferguson, okay? So they already know about this. There's not a big long narration that's needed. They lived this moment. Then we go into the argument and the argument matches exactly what it says at the top. I believe this first, here is my second reason, here is my third reason. And the argument follows that pretty closely. Here's the first reason, police brutality has become a nationwide problem. And we see this student use credible sources to support their reason, okay? Evidence to support that reason. Then the student moves into the refutation. However, some people say the opposite. And this student responds to that, all right? Saying stuff, this comparison is inadequate, right? Also, this does not excuse. Um, and then we have a concession. Here's where we agree. I agree that our police need to know they have the support of their leaders. However, giving that support is not the same as criticism. So we have this lovely refutation concession which the student then takes into um, their third point, right? Which is criticism has no adverse effects. The student follows up with their, with their final point, we use constructive criticism all the time. 
and then the student has their conclusion where they spin it forward to the sympathetic audience and says, I believe we can do better. Okay? So hopefully that was something you guys noticed or got, and then you were able to answer the question um, about that. So you can use this as a guide for your own paper. However, I think that there are some weaknesses in this paper. That last argument that the student makes about we use criticism in our everyday lives, I feel like that's maybe the weakest argument. So I would put that argument either first or sandwich it in between the other two. I'm not sure it's the strongest position to, to leave with, to leave the reader thinking about. Um, okay, so that is arrangement. You guys have the slides. You guys have the modules. You started writing. Remember that pacing calendar that you have for the persuasive essay we have this week and next week. But your essay needs to be largely done by Tuesday so that we can peer review it. So a week from tomorrow, okay? So you need to get started writing again on the slides. You can go to the Writing Center. Um, you can watch the video to see how to access the Writing Center. And for those of you who weren't here, one more time, that video is on our announcements page. It says Accessing Writing Consultation. Okay. If you don't have any questions, then you guys, class is over in 10 minutes, and you guys can get busy writing. I'm going to hang out here and answer whatever questions students still have about who my audience should be, or I don't understand, you know, the the conclusion. Can you go over that? So I'm here if you've got questions. If you don't have questions, have a great day, and I will see you later.